Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about an unusual event that will occur just over a million years from now, when a star from somewhere far far away is actually going to pass through our solar system and very likely cause a little bit of a trouble to things in it. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. This was a Hollywood trick. I totally over-dramatized this. It's not going to pass this close. It's also not going to be named Nustashi, and it's definitely not going to destroy our solar system. But it is going to do something unusual. So we're going to go back into a solar system simulation and imagine the year is now 1.35 million AD, basically 1.35 million years from now. There's a star that you can currently kind of see in the skies if you have binoculars and it's about 63-ish light years away from us. It's a star by the name of Gliese 710. It has other names as well, but that's not important. Now we don't actually have the star in the simulation here, so we have to improvise, but it's a star that's kind of sun-like, but a little bit less massive than the sun, a little bit smaller in size. and. Um, it's going to pass through the outer solar system, specifically through our Oort cloud, which is located relatively far, actually. It uh, basically starts around uh, 1,000 astronomical units and goes on to about 100,000 astronomical units, so like here-ish. It's going to pass through and fly through and very likely disturb the Oort cloud. Now, in this simulation, what I wanted to do is I basically wanted to just launch this star at that specific distance where we think it's going to pass and then observe the solar system, specifically Earth, and see if anything happens. Now, today we think nothing will happen in terms of actual orbital changes. As a matter of fact, we're pretty certain nothing will happen, but because it's going to pass so close to um, Oort cloud, or basically through the Oort cloud, um, there's a big chance that it's going to disturb um, our Oort cloud and very likely increase the chance for cometary encounters in the inner solar system. Now, we won't be able to simulate this, unfortunately, because it requires a lot of computing power, but we are going to just launch the star and observe. So. We, a long time ago, we thought it was going to pass within a one light year, which is far, far away over there. But then we recalculated very recently as of 2010 and discovered that it's going to be at a distance of approximately 13,000, but maybe even 9,000 astronomical units. Now, I'm going to pick a random object here just to show you how relatively close it is. So, um, Pluto is somewhere right here at 40 astronomical units. Eris and Sedna are right there, and we're going to a distance of about 9,000 astronomical units, which is just over here. So it's actually relatively close. So we're going to launch a star, Glia 710, just at this region, but we're going to change the parameters just so it's a little bit more realistic. And so it's going to pass through this 9,000 astronomical unit region, and... As it passes closer and closer to our sun, we're going to observe the effects. So right now we need to actually accelerate time a little bit, just so it gets a little bit closer to us. And then as it gets closer and closer, we're going to slow down time and go into our solar system and observe what happens there. So right now the distance is maybe about 13-ish thousand astronomical units and it's going to decrease to about nine astronomical units. And it's kind of headed toward this region right here. Um, one of the reasons we actually discovered that it's even coming toward us is because when we were looking at it from, from Earth, we realized that it's basically literally moving in almost completely straight line toward us. And that kind of scared the scientists. They realized that it's totally heading toward us. Uh, and one other thing that I actually didn't mention is that if this star is sun-like, and if it actually has its own planets, its own asteroid belt, its own Oort cloud, this means that we're going to be within its Oort cloud. So in other words, all of this asteroid stuff that we have on the outskirts of our solar system, all of these comets, might actually inadvertently make it to our planet because we're going to be passing through them. But that's all speculation. Maybe it doesn't have that. And also by then, 1.3 million years from now, we might not even care because we might not even exist. But anyway, that's not what we're here for. We're here to discuss the changes in orbital parameters. 
Now we're going to change this into astronomical units. And just watch the eccentricity here. If, if ever the eccentricity and the orbital parameters of our planet change, this means that there's going to be trouble to come. If they don't get affected at all in the next uh, whatever time it takes to, to reach um, the 9000 mark from, from our sun, basically when Galea 710 passes through that point, then we're going to be fine. And so here it is, it's basically at about 9000 astronomical units from us. We're going to go back into our solar system and see what's going on inside. Maybe something will change, maybe nothing will change. Very likely nothing will change because it is relatively far. Also, I forgot to mention that at this distance, um, this object will not be super bright because it's actually not very massive to begin with. Uh, its brightness will be very similar to Mars, maybe a little bit brighter to how Mars looks like from our, um, from our planet. So basically like a small star. It's not going to be as bright as the sun and it's definitely not going to increase the temperature at all because it's still pretty far away from us. And in the last uh, few million years, specifically about maybe 7.3 million years from now, there was another star system that passed and influenced our Oort cloud quite dramatically, and this was the Algol uh, triple star system. But, and because it's actually much, much more massive than the star that we have here, Glia 710, uh, it's about 5.8 solar masses. Even though it passed at a distance of about five light years, I think, or maybe nine light years, sorry, about nine light years, um, it actually influenced the Oort cloud and very likely increased the collisions on our planet Earth. At least that's the speculation. That's really the only thing we're worried about. We're worried about that Glia 710, when it passes through the Oort cloud, there it is, when it passes through the Oort cloud, it might actually uh, cause all of these comets to suddenly go into our solar system and then cause a lot of collisions. But as you can see, the actual orbital parameters of our planet really haven't been affected at all. So even though it's passing through the closest point to us right now, nothing is really changing for our planet. Our orbital parameters and obviously everything related to it, like the weather effects and also climate will not be affected at all by, by this passage but expect higher chances of uh, cometary or asteroid collisions, because we even think that it might increase by as much as 10 times um, from what we have now. But don't forget that the last collision was actually millions of years, last serious collision was millions of years ago, so the only types of collisions um, that might kind of cause problem for Earth in the future would be very similar to the ones that occurred in uh, Tunguska back in 1910. And this was a very large um, aerial explosion that basically created a lot of forest fires and flattened a lot of land. So those might happen as frequently as one every 10 years. But that's once again a speculation based on just statistical models. But other than that, when Glia 710 passes through our solar system, it's very unlikely anything else will happen. That's, of course, if it doesn't have its own objects. But if we do have uh, a lot of Oort cloud ob objects around it, which we're going to simulate right now, uh, maybe there will be a collision. Now let's actually try this. We're, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the ring creation system and we're going to create uh, a ring system in between about... 7,000 to about 12,000 astronomical units. This is going to be shaped like a sphere and these rings will be randomly distributed and we're also going to change color. Although I don't know if it will be affected by it, but we're going to change color just so it's a little bit easier to see them. Let's make them like blue or something. Um, and let's, let's add that and let's see what happens actually. So here we go. This is going to be about 5,000 of them. This is just so that my game doesn't actually start struggling with the simulation. And we're going to now take a look at any of these objects, the blue objects that are kind of barely even visible, and see if any of them will actually enter the inner solar system. So there they are in the background. You can kind of see there's like 5,000 of them, and they're kind of all over the place, but only some of them, actually, as a matter of fact, very, very few of them are even close to the inner solar system. So the chance for an actual collision with anything inside our solar system is relatively low. Now that's obviously because I only placed 5,000 of them. Maybe if I place more, there would be a higher chance, but uh, 
I think there's only one way to find out if that's true. We're going to do it again, and this time really place like a lot of them right here, and then see what actually happens. So this time they're a little bit easier to see, and they're just specifically where our solar system is located. And if I move in closer again, you'll see that really none of them are actually inside. So once again, the chance for collisions with our pl inner planets are relatively low. And this is with like something like 10,000 objects uh, that are relatively massive. And so anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to tell you about this near approach in 1.35 million years from now, a star known as Glia 710, a star that's actually not very well known, unfortunately, but it might be well known in the future. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games. And before we finish, let's create some explosioning by detonating a few objects in our solar system. See you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.